One of the most important skills that a data analyst should possess is SQL language. Do you want to write an appropriate SQL language? Do you want to master how to use SQL to query databases? Then this course is for you. Are you a data analyst as well or you're just getting started in your career, you don't even know how to get started and you are just looking for how to learn this SQL? Well, SQL is very interesting. If you have been using Excel or some other business intelligence tool, I'm sure it will be very, very easy for you to kind of learn SQL and know how to use SQL for your day-to-day -day data activities, right? For me, when I started my career, I never knew that um, SQL is actually very important because I started from Excel. And you know from Excel, when you have some tables in Excel, you can easily kind of filter your table, um, just make sure that you pivot your table and do some an analysis right there in Excel. When it comes to analyzing and querying big data, which is data that are stored in databases, then you need SQL, which simply stands for Structured Query Language. So in this course, you'll be learning how to master SQL from basic to intermediate and how to use SQL as a data analyst or a data scientist. We also cover the overview of SQL language. We'll cover the understanding of CRUD, which is basically create, read, update and delete right we also look at comparisons in sql we look at text manipulations aggregations how to use white cards how to undo nulls we talk about case statements nulls and we talk about date manipulation and most importantly you're going to build your own capstone project in this course so make sure you watch the course to the end because at the end of this course there are some created projects or let me share solutions or questions that we have actually put together for you to kind of dirty your hands with right you'll be able to kind of curate your own capstone project at the end of this course before we go further i want to say a big thank you to the team that we actually come together to make this course a big success the first shout out is going to go to sylvia which she she teamed up with me to create this course i'm sure you see some interesting exercises that was created by her in this course she kind of assists in creating most of those exercises you can see in this course. She's a freelance data analyst. You can connect with her on LinkedIn and also maybe on Twitter. Her name is Sylvia Wuche. I'm also going to say a shout out to Vivian Ido. She also assists in designing most of the things you can see on this slide. She was a kind of app in designing some of the things on the slide. So big shout out to the team. Now to the big question, many people will ask, what is SQL? Well, some people will call it SQL. Some people will call it uh, SQL. It's actually <laughs> the same thing. So whatever you like, just be confident, right? SQL simply means structured query language, right? And it is used to communicate with your database. You know, when you want to communicate to somebody, it's just similar to a language. Imagine I want to talk to somebody that understands English, I can only communicate with English. I want to speak Spanish with somebody that understands Spanish, I'm only communicating in Spanish, right? But when it comes to databases, the way you can actually communicate with them is by this SQL language, structure query language. That's how you can communicate with databases. So the language that this database speaks is SQL. Now, I mean, what is the database? I don't even know what the database means. A database is a systematically organized collection of data. In every business, there is something we call operational system. So this is talking about how each business operate their business and when these businesses are operating their business they usually store their data somewhere let's say for example you go into a shopping mall to buy or purchase one or two things right i'm sure a cashier actually kind of inputs all the things you bought and kind of put it into a system somewhere so that system which is systematically organized collection of data so this data has been collected and is being stored in a database and that is what a database actually means. And now when we're talking about database, we have different type of database. We have relational database, which is practically talking about organizations of data into rows and columns. And it can also have some predefined relationship. So when you hear relational databases, these are just databases that are structures in rows and columns, basically tables. An example of these databases are SQL, PostgreSQL, Oracle, uh, SQL Server, MySQL, and some other databases. Now, another type of databases that we also have is non-relational databases. They are a bit different from other databases because they are designed for unstructured, semi-structured, structured data without fixed schema. So this kind of databases kind of store data related to key value, family, graphs, documents, 
or let me say a database is where you keep your pictures you keep your videos and you keep some other valuable documents but basically not structures and tables and columns or in rows and columns example of the databases are mongodb cassandra and some other interesting databases out there but for structure query language which is basically SQL or SQL, whatever you want to call it, is basically focused on relational database. So the primary focus of SQL is to query relational databases. This is databases that this language can communicate with. Imagine I said I want to query a table and I want to see this particular amount of rows in the table. I want to query these particular columns. I want to query these particular rows. So you are basically querying columns and rows. And the next question is, where are these databases located? And I'm sure that you will have heard of on-premises and cloud. On-premise simply means that databases that are reside on your server, or let me say locally. Databases that are reside on your system somewhere. You may be thinking what is on-premises is just maybe your computer sitting somewhere and you store something under your computer without putting it on the cloud, right? That is on-premises. Your databases can also be located on the cloud, which is basically online. Well, frankly speaking, Cloud is also on-premises to some organizations because, for example, an organization can have a very, very big server, give access to storages in their server to some people to be able to play around with online, and you pay for a particular subscriptions or a particular size of that story. So we basically have on-premises and cloud storage. But in this course, we'll be exploring mostly on-premises since we are still practicing. So what is the need for SQL? in all these databases and why do we need to use SQL to query these databases? Now, when it comes to managing large data set efficiently, SQL will kind of help you with that. For those that are familiar with Excel very well, we all know the limitation of Excel that Excel cannot take a data that is more than 1 million 400 and something rows, right? And from Excel, even if you have a 1 million rows, it's not really easy for you to kind of summarize the data to kind of get some information you need. Imagine your manager is telling you to extract 10 years data with some conditions in Excel. It's kind of a little bit stressful before you go there, filter, filter, or you pivot the data. Actually, kind of take a lot of your time. And then this can actually slow your PC down. But when it comes to large data set, you can easily write this language or this query basically to query what you need data for the last 10 years based on some set of conditions. Another thing is it also help you analyze and extract insight from data. Not just you getting what you basically need from the data, but you can also analyze and extract insight from this data. It also ensures data security and integrity because this means that people cannot just have access to your data because there are some securities with SQL as well that you can actually implement while writing your query. It also supports multi-user access and scalability, and it's also enabled data-driven decision-making. So when you're working with the very, very big data, SQL is the language that you need to communicate with um, your databases to query your databases to create some insight from your databases, and it also kind of works faster. And I'm sure you've been hearing me saying query, query, query a lot of time. And most people will ask me what is query. A query is a request for data or information from a database. So you're basically requesting a data from a database. Imagine that you go to a library, a very, very big library, right? And in this library, we have a lot of books. And you actually need a particular book called, um, called Getting Started with SQL. Now, when you get to the library, based on how the library books are actually arranged, they're going to kind of ask some information. Let's say, for example, they are arranged alphabetically. So the first thing you would do is you will go to the, the, the chef that, are, that started with G, basically, because you're looking for a book called Getting Started with um, um, SQL. So you're going to go to this chef, look for the book you want, and pick that book out. That is actually similar to a query. Because a query is a request for data or information from a database. So you are requesting for a data or information in a database, or you're also creating an information. Queries are typically written in a special language designed for interacting with database, such as SQL, structured query language. And that is what a query is. You're requesting for something from somewhere. 
Credit can perform a variety of tasks such as create, read, update, and delete, which basically means that you can create some information into your database. You can create the databases, you can create a table, you can add some information. You can also read this information, right? Read your databases by asking for different informations based on conditions, based on this, based on that. And you can also update your databases. You can update tables in your databases and you can also delete. In summary, CRUD, which is create, read, update and delete, is the summary of the entire thing that we actually do in SQL. Now, where are we running our query from? Usually, we run these queries from an editors. Some databases actually provide an editor directly uh, in their database. While we also have some editors that are third party that you can actually connect your databases to. Example of this is Google Cloud, Azure, VS Code, XSMS, MySQL, and Azure Data Studio. And this is where we run this query from most of the time. So SQL has five different type of command. Five different type of command. The first one, which is DDL, is data defined language. So here you're actually defining data. You are creating a data, you are altering a table, or you are deleting or dropping a table, you are truncating a table, or you are renaming some aspect of your data. We also have DML, which is data manipulation language. We use it a lot of the time to kind of manipulate our data by inserting information into our database, updating our databases, delete some information in the databases, and also merge some information. We have DCL, which is basically data control language. We talk about grant and revoke, manage the security aspect of SQL. We have TCL and also DQL, which focus on select. So in this course, basically, we'll be focusing on DDL, DML, and DQL which is basically data defined language, data manipulations language, and also data query language. All this is what we're going to explore in this course, and you will see how we can actually use them to make informed data-driven decisions. Make sure you watch this course to the end.